Looking out at the sea of faces, I'm inspired by the determination, hope, promise, and joy that I see. Whether this is the first step in your educational journey, or the final piece you need to move on to another life goal, this is a major accomplishment. Congratulations, 2024 graduates. And to quote a favorite author of mine, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. That from Dr. Seuss in all the places you'll go. As you venture into the next step of your journey, we hope you will not forget us. The MJC Foundation wants to stay connected. We are happy to see you go, but we also want to see you come back because we will not forget you. We want to know when you become a famous actor, a local business owner, an influencer, or whatever the next chapter in your life adventure leads you to be. We want to bring you back to this side of the stage as a Modesto Junior College Distinguished Alum. The tradition of selecting an alumnus of the year began in 1967. The MJC Foundation helped the Alumni Association select a person who would reflect on the impact of their education and inspire the newly graduated to accomplish their dreams and pursue their passions. This year's Distinguished Alum truly represents the tenacity and perseverance of an MJC student. His time here was divided between classes and work. His determination and dedication to his job helped him advance within the company. His appreciation for this life journey has led him back to MJC tonight. His story definitely takes some unconventional twists and turns, some of which he will share with you today. But some of his memories on MJC include writing, the celebration of the humanities competition for poetry, and an independent novel as well. His career is impressive and inspiring, from innovative industry research to advocacy for farm worker wages and working conditions. But his willingness to give back is most remarkable of all. He is here to share with you what you are just learning. The world is hard work and determination will get you through it. Please help me welcome back to his hometown for the weekend, our 2024 Distinguished Alum, Chad Sokol. Good evening. When I came to Modesto Junior College in 1997, my world was about this big. I grew up in a closed off world. We didn't celebrate holidays. We weren't allowed to have any friends outside of our very tight religious circle. Our parents didn't vote, have anything to do with politics, and higher education was strictly forbidden in our religion. We believed that the end of the world was coming any day, and our sole purpose, even as children, was to save as many souls as possible. And it was so close, we were told, that we would never even graduate high school or have to worry about a job, a career, or the salvation of a framed diploma nailed to an office wall. But high school came and went. I was a minister by that point, and I still thought the end was near, so I focused my time on studying the Bible. After a few years of stocking aisles and pulling and shopping carts from the parking lot at Costco here in Modesto, I thought at some point, well, maybe I could become a teacher. I could study biblical history. It would make me a better minister, and it would save my back and my knees. So I stumbled into Modesto Junior College without a clue on what to do or how to proceed. The Hyatt Elders in the church warned me that this was a terrible idea, that I would be exposed to all sorts of worldly philosophies, and they were going to remove me from my position. But I was positive that they were wrong. I was sure it would only make me a better minister, and I shrugged off their concerns. My first semester, I took Western Civilization class with Tony Bedford. First few weeks, I show up to school in a suit and tie, ready to go straight to the preaching work, knocking on doors right after class. But by the end of that first semester, a tiny little world started to open up, and it all came crashing down. I realized that so much of what I thought I knew wasn't real, just wasn't true. Trying to predict the end of the world based on prophecy and adhere dates and times to historical events just didn't hold up to any kind of scrutiny. And I'm not really talking about anyone's personal beliefs or religion in general. I'm really talking about strict dogma that's more about control and not about personal faith. So what was I supposed to do now? 
I had trained my whole life up until this point to be a minister, waiting for the end of the world, and I didn't know how to plan for the future. But it was too late. The genie was out of the bottle. I was curious, I had questions, and there was no going back, so I blindly pushed forward. I became a sponge in school, soaking in everything around me from history, philosophy, politics, English, poetry. But I was a child in so many ways. I didn't understand or know anything outside my religion. We grew up very poor. No one in my family had ever gone to college. The only book I ever saw anyone read was the Bible. Luckily, some kind instructors took an interest in me and took me under their wing. Eventually, I transferred to UC Berkeley, and I graduated with honors with my bachelor's degree in history. I'd already changed my mind about going into teaching at that point, <laughs> and I thought I was on my way to law school. But uh, to share my probably all-time favorite quote, this is from the Dalai Lama. It says, remember that not getting what you want can sometimes be a wonderful stroke of luck. I got an email from Costco after I graduated asking uh, for college graduates to apply to the buying office. I had already been at the company for 10 years at that point, working my way through college, so I gave it a shot, I took a chance. I didn't even know there was a buying office or really what they did there. At that same time, I was studying for the LSAT, and I was accepted to law school, but I deferred my enrollment until I could kind of figure out what I really wanted to do. Eventually, I skipped out on law school, and I decided to try to work my way up the Costco ladder. I became a commodity food buyer, and over the last 20 years, I've had the privilege to travel all over the world, working with farmers, developing supply chains, conducting social and food safety audits, striving to improve pay and working conditions for farmers in third world countries, and even in our own backyard right here in the Central Valley. I had a back door into the one of the most important aspects of humanity, the world food supply chain. I began to understand not only how it worked, but that I could positively impact change in more ways than I ever could have imagined. And that was really when it hit me. What I found so invigorating and addicting about school, especially history and philosophy, was the why behind events. How change happened? What was driving it all? What was the subtext? And I second-guessed myself many times for not going into academics or law school, but one day I realized that my career at Costco was giving me insights into the why behind world food systems. And I thought, what could be more important? Today, I'm responsible for the financial impacts of $25 billion a year worth of sales and margin in the world's third largest global retailer. I've moved up from pulling shopping carts in the parking lot and several levels from a buyer to my current role as vice president. I've had the opportunity to speak at agriculture conferences. I've given guest lectures at UC Berkeley in supply chain economics. I served in as an advisor to the California Department of Agriculture, and I've been on the cover of Market Watch magazine. And you know what? I actually never studied business. I didn't study economics, finance, or even agriculture. I was a history major, and I wrote poetry, but I realized that really critical thinking skills, deciphering logic from fallacy, being able to read between the lines and see the subtext running underneath everything, those are the skills that I really learned in college and embraced. Those skill sets allowed me to learn all the other details later on. But without that foundation that I started to build right here at Modesto Junior College as a humanities major, I never could have succeeded in my career. What it took was a switch, a button, a paradigm shift in my thinking and realize what I had in front of me. More importantly, it took an open mind for me to even allow myself to question what I believed in the first place. I was scared to death at the time, but something propelled me to go forward where logic took me. You know, some people have a straight line in their life, from upbringing to career to family, etc. My life has been an insane zigzag of twists and turns, taking chances, hard work, and a lot of failures along the way. I would guess that as graduates of Modesto Junior College, many of you came from uncertain backgrounds, full of challenges and obstacles, which is why community colleges exist in the first place, for you and for people like me. In the first place, I'm a family of people that come to college, and I guess many of you here are the same. Those who haven't had it easy, maybe didn't feel destined for college. I was a single father with a young daughter when I started at Modesto Junior College. I worked full-time at Costco, and I struggled through failed marriages, bankruptcy, living paycheck to paycheck. I had to decide so many times between buying groceries and paying the electric bill, all with no help from my family, who ostracized me from my choices. In pushing myself through college and leaving that religion, I was cut off. 
I lost almost all of my family and most childhood friends that haven't spoken to me in decades now. I have vivid memories of bringing my daughter to class at times with me because I didn't always have daycare. And I'm sure I'm probably not the only one out here today who's probably had to do that. I didn't have a car, I walked, I took the bus, I barely strayed by for many years. But I knew that pursuing education was going to be the only thing that was going to continue to open doors for me. And you know what? MJC, college, a degree, these aren't silver bullets. They're not necessarily magical in and of themselves, but they do open doors that would otherwise not be available to you. You still have to walk through them. My experience at the Destro Junior College was the most pivotal point in my life. Not just the classes, the education, but the connections that I made with many professors, a lot of which I'm still good friends with today. Kathy Shaw, Tony Bedford, Curtis Martin, Laura Paul, Bill and Nelly, Sam Pierstorff, Al Smith, and many others that I owe so much to. They genuinely cared about me. And they're here because they love what they do and they believe that teaching has value. So take advantage of them, stay in touch, let them know their efforts are being valued. You know, when looking back also over my life, I've realized that all my mistakes, failures, screw-ups, and even my complete ignorance, these were also some of the greatest teachers I've ever had. But the key is to listen to them too, to learn from them. Don't be afraid or embarrassed of your mistakes, and whatever you do, keep going. I wanted to share a poem that I wrote recently, uh, thinking about all of this. This is called Failure is the Greatest Teacher. Sorry, did Professor Sam. <laughs> Why do we only showcase the good china and light the tapered stems of candles stretching for the chandelier to celebrate the intelligent memories, the victories? Why not adorn the mantle with the words of omissions, failures, and apologies, commemorating the regrettable mistakes? Why not toast to the day that we launched brakeless bicycles off a plywood ramp over Miller's Creek bed, like the idiot kids we were? Why not ride an anthem to the dull blade of a chef's knife, slipping off the shiny crust of a bagel, chunking a crevice out of your index finger? Where are the parties crouching down in the dark, waiting to scream surprise for the ones that accepted dare over truth? Forks joggling in electrical sockets, unleashing an arsenal through the entire factory of the nervous system. Where are the distinguished alumni handing out diplomas for enrolling in bad marriages and dropping out of building homes? Because in the end, whoever really gleaned a valuable lesson from a simple pat on the back or a gold medallion hung like a wreath around the tender branch Several years ago, when I was uh, still a buyer, I was touring organic Roma tomato fields just outside of Fresno. I was out in the fields and I was riding along a mechanical harvester along with a crew that was separating out the bad tomatoes or keeping only the good ones. At the end of that long furrow of tomatoes were stacks and stacks of wooden pallet bins that would transport the tomatoes from the field down to the factory. The same wooden pallet bins that you probably see going up and down Highway 99 on flatbed trucks all the time now. I used to build those wooden pallet bins. Before Costco, I used to work at a warehouse in Ceres off of South 7th Street, underneath the Hatch Road overpass, just on the other side of the Lion Street Bridge, right past those trailer parks. It was well over 100 degrees in that warehouse in the summer, and I worked the drill press at one station for 10 hours a day before the plywood sides of the pallets went to the next station where they were then assembled. This was before Costco before Modesto Junior College, when I was still a minister, and I just needed any job to get me through until the end of the world came. Fast forward 30 years later, and I was standing there in that field of tomatoes, completely on the other end of the supply chain as the Costco buyer for the entire company's supply of organic canned tomatoes. And I'll tell you, standing there in that field, looking at those stacks of empty pallet bins, thinking about where I had been, that hit me harder than anything in my life. And if you were to ask me today how to navigate from a warehouse in series to my role today, I honestly couldn't tell you exactly how I got here, except lots of luck, lots of chances and hard work, and quite a few little failures along the way. 
but I can definitely tell you that my initial steps down that path would not have even been possible without my start right here at Modesto Junior College.